And we are back with the fifth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fifth segment, we are going to be talking about the Denver Nuggets and whether or not they should run it back. So, honestly, you know, might as well go ahead and throw in the Knicks there as well. I didn't think I would throw in the Knicks, but if we don't have, or if there is more time, I will talk about whether I think the Knicks should run it back or if, you know, they should just keep it the same. But... The Denver Nuggets, so far, I mean, they went to seven games, and Jokic and Jamal Murray, they played very well. Like, their numbers were great, but their efficiency was not up to par to what I, to what's usually expected from them, if that makes sense. I mean, they played great, but... One of the biggest pro- one of the big differences in this game was that Jokic was forcing a lot of shot attempts when he usually doesn't force that many shot attempts. So forcing all of those shot attempts definitely affected their their play and it affected them winning. The game sort of turned into like instead of okay, the Nuggets are just going to keep dominating to okay, now we have to make sure that we just keep winning the game so just make sure you have long possessions and stall that was sort of what the end game sort of looked like for the um for the nuggets and obviously when you have Jokic playing and shooting the ball like he was shooting the ball you're not really going to win the game like that I mean he was forcing a lot of really bad shots and the defense was also very good on him not to mention Michael Porter Jr. also played relatively poorly in in this game i mean like he did not he didn't play well at all like it was not it i'm sorry to say it it just it was not it for michael porter jr in those in those last few games in the last stretch and it it costed them it really did cost them but do i think they should run it back yes I think they should. Now, I'll give you my reasoning for that. Jesus, I almost dropped that. I apologize. But I'll give you my reasoning for why they, why I think they should run it back. So, they've, this game was decided by defense and a relatively poor performance coming in from Michael Porter Jr. As well as, you know, Jamal and Jokic late in the stretch. Just late in the game. Because... They had a 20-point lead, but that 20-point lead diminished, and they they blew that lead. Now, it's the fact that they led. They just needed to hold on to that lead, and they would have won the series. But unfortunately, that's not what happened, and you know they were able to rally. And on top of that, Anthony Edwards didn't shoot the ball that well either. It was just a collapse for this Nuggets team. And I have a feeling that it's not going to happen to them in the future. I mean, all they have to do is take this, learn from it, and then apply it into next season. I think they still have enough pieces and good enough players to be able to compete again. And all they have to do is just run it back. Because it it came down to a game seven, and they were up by 20 points, and they choked. It's, it's just that simple. It's a choke. And whenever you choke, you can obviously run it back and prevent that choking from happening by learning from your previous mistakes. So, with that in mind, I have a feeling they're going to take this loss and they're going to better from it and they're going to just be better in the next season and run it back again. Because, like, having Jokic and Jamal Murray on the roster, you're immediately a championship team in my eyes. And all you really needed in that game seven was for Michael Porter Jr. to hit a couple of shots. And... If he would have hit a couple of shots, then the game would have definitely planned out, panned out a little bit different. So I think they should run it back with the exact same lineup that they have. I mean, if they can get other pieces and like you know add on to the already talented roster they have, that would be great, obviously. But I genuinely think they should just they should run it back. Now, now I might as well go ahead and talk about the Knicks as well. Do I think the Knicks should I do I think the Knicks have a good shot of running it back like do i think they should run it back or not me personally without julius randall they need to get rid 
of Julius Randle right this instant. I'm not a big fan of Julius Randle. I was not. I was never a big fan of him when he was on the Knicks at the first start of his um, Nick career. He played horribly in his first ever postseason run, and he played just as bad in his second postseason run. I am not a big fan of Julius. I want him off the New York Knicks. What I really do want to see, I really do want to see, my, I want to see um, Bridges on, like, I want to see Mikal Bridges on the Knicks. I think the, I think the Knicks and the Nets should trade and try to move Mikal Bridges to New York, like, to the Knicks. Because as a Nets fan, I'm not a big fan of Mikal now. I mean, I thought he was going to be the number one option for the team, but it doesn't really look like that's going to be the case. So get him out of here. Get him off the roster. I do not want him. I will graciously sacri- I would love to graciously sacrifice Mikal Bridges so that way he can go play for New York and maybe have a decent chance of winning a title there in New York. Because, quite frankly, see, I would love to see him with his Villanova brothers again. I mean, Mikal Bridges, uh, Jalen Brunson, DiVincenzo, and Josh Hart all on the same team yet again. That's just Villanova right there. The Villanova Knicks. I mean, that would be very fun to watch. I would love to watch all four of them be on the same team again. And... Not to mention the chemistry would be so much better if Mikal Bridges was on the Knicks. I mean, he would have already played with three of the players in the starting lineup. And then, not to mention, you add OG, who's also a relatively good defender. He could come off the bench while, like, for any of those star players that, um, any of those Villanova players that I just mentioned. And on top of that, Thibs. Tom Thibodeau would love to have Mikal Bridges, who is willing to play every single NBA game and every single NBA minute that he possibly can get. He is an Iron Man. I mean, he had a time where he played 83 games in the season before, and he didn't miss a single one. He is perfect for Thibs and his rotation ideas. Absolutely perfect. And on top of that, he doesn't get injured as much. Like... As much as Julius Randle gets injured, he knows how to protect... Like, Bridges knows how to protect his body a lot better than Julius Randle. So I think if Mikal Bridges joins the Knicks, it would be a match made in heaven. Now, the biggest problem for them, obviously, would be, like, who to trade for, like, for to gain... Because the Knicks would have to give up a lot of pretty valuable pieces just to get Mikal Bridges. But honestly, since it is the Brooklyn Nets, I wouldn't be surprised if they mess up this trade and, um, you know, they get, the Knicks get Mikal Bridges for, like, pocket change or something like that. Would not be surprised if that's the case whatsoever. But I wouldn't mind sacrificing Bridges just for, you know, the chance of a New York team being good. Would not mind that in the slightest whatsoever. And a lot of people, like, they, they question, why is it that you like the Nets and you like the Knicks? Aren't they supposed to be rivals? Technically, yes. But none of them are really affiliated with my state, if that makes sense. I mean, the only reason why I am a Nets over Knicks fan is because the Nets used to be the New Jersey... The Nets used to be New Jersey. So... I would rather root for that team than the New York Knicks, even though every other team I root for in every single sport is a New York team, whether it be football, um, well, aside from hockey, where they actually have a New Jersey team, but whether it be football, whether it be basketball, like every single team that I root for is a New York team. And I just, it, I don't see a problem in rooting for both of them. And... Granted, obviously, if the Nets are in the playoffs and the Knicks are in the playoffs, I am rooting for the Nets every single day of the week. But if one of them is more successful, than, if one of them is a little bit more successful than the other, then I'm going to root for the other successful New York team because they're closest to me. And I watch both of their games. I have the ability to watch both of their games from my TV using cable. So that's sort of my reasoning as to why I am a Nets and a Knicks fan. Granted, most of the time... I've watched, like, you know, 
I had to watch the Knicks be absolutely horrible. I mean, they had Carmelo Anthony for a while when I was growing up watching the NBA, but it didn't really pan out that well. And then Kevin Durant and Kyrie came over to Brooklyn, and I was just like, ooh, that, that looks like fun to watch. So I just kept watching them, kept pulling my hair out, this, that, and the other. And I, I really liked the position that I was in up until, you know, they decided to trade. I'm still, you know, a vivid Nets fan, regardless of whether or not they're good or they're bad. But it's come playoff time where I decide to root for the New York team. I feel like that's that makes enough sense. But a lot of people, you know, a lot of weirdos and a lot of fanatics are going to be like, oh, that's a weirdo, you're not supposed to be a New York team, nah, 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 nah. this, that, and the other. But it's it's completely different because it's like, they both stink. They're really bad. It's not. It's nothing like the as much as as much as um, people want to make it a rivalry. It is not the same rivalry as the Clippers and the Lakers. It's just not the same whatsoever. Like you don't. I don't really get a similar vibe from that. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I don't really get a similar vibe as I get from Lakers going up against Clippers. But that's really all I have to say in this fourth segment. So I think the reiterating, I think the Nuggets should run it back. The Knicks, on the other hand, I feel like they need to add Mikhail Bridges and then they can run it back. I mean, they could also, they could try doing it with a healthy team before they try to get Mikhail, given how they really had an unfair chance in this playoff series and in the playoffs in general. But I genuinely think that, you know, they need to get Mikhail and if they do get Mikhail Bridges, it's game over. So that's all I have for this fifth segment, and that is the end of the show. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. And as usual, please remember to use the link in the description to get your comments recognized or the link displayed below the ticker on every single show segment. It's gsmcpodcast.net. It really helps the show, makes the show much more interactive between myself and you guys. That is all I have for you guys today in this show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host, Nelson. And as always, take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go. To-